Good afternoon, everyone. It is exactly 3.17 and we are heading out on an epic road trip. Yeah, we're going on a really awesome drive. I think it's like four and a half, five hours. Yep. Probably gonna take a lot longer with all the stops with the dogs. Good thing is, it is the longest day of the year or the day after. So we have the sunshine on our side. We're headed east to a town called Chitna on the Copper River. And we're going to be dip netting. So exciting. Yep. As residents, you can dip net here. This is gonna be our second year doing it and we're just super, super thrilled. Yes, last year, this wasn't our year. We got skunked. The fishing apparently wasn't that good, but we didn't know what we were doing. We're a little more prepared this year. We got the truck just fully loaded down. We had to put a rack on the top. We got two ice chests. We got gear, food. We got two nets. I mean, you name it, we got. The truck is just loaded down. And a whole bunch of extra gear and clothes because like Eric said, we're not really quite sure what our situation is gonna be. Yep. We're gonna bring you guys for the trip. We're gonna stop and show you what it looks like when we stop and right now we are in a beautiful area South yes. Mountains. Yep we're kind of taking a little shortcut it's not really a shortcut but it's more scenic yep. we're heading over we're gonna catch up with the highway over there right now it's raining it's forecasted to be pretty nice weather so we'll see what we can get into. Yep. Bo and Bandit. Bo. Please don't cross the road by yourself. Come on. Let's hit the road. Let's do it. Okay, you ready? Let's go. We got more weather ahead of us. We're heading into the heading into the dense fog now. I can't song. even see. I can't see nothing. All right, first stop, we made it over the mountains. It's cleared up. Got a beautiful view behind us. That's the Matanuska River. That's the town of Palmer. We got four bags of ice. We have two ice chests. One of them's our big one, and that's strictly gonna be, we're hopefully putting salmon in. The other one's our smaller one. We're gonna put our food in there for now. And if we get enough fish, we're gonna put in salmon in that one. We're gonna grab a little snack and we're gonna hit the road again. All right, third stop of the day, road work. They got us stopped here. Got a flagger up ahead, but it's uh, it's 4.45. We've been almost 60 miles, and pretty much the plan for tonight is to make it there. We're gonna take our time. This drive is like one of the most beautiful drives ever, so we really like coming this way. We don't come this way too often, but we're gonna get out there, and we wanna find a spot where we're gonna fish, um, try to find a nice beach. That'd be the perfect plan where we could bring the dogs down there and you know stay for a while. We might do some fishing tonight, but we're not quite sure. We just stopped at one of my favorite spots to look at on the way out here. It's the Matanuska Glacier. You can probably see it behind me. And it smells so lovely out here. It's like all the wild roses are blooming. It just smells like roses. It's a pretty warm day. It's about 64 degrees. There's a nice breeze. Pretty nice weather. Not super sunny, but that's okay. Not bad weather. It's not raining. There's a town here called Glacier View, and then we're headed up to another spot that is like my absolute favorite spot probably in all of Alaska that I've been to. Okay, so this is one of our favorite spots to stop. Uh, honestly, we don't know really what town it's in. I don't think there's really a town here. And it's absolutely beautiful. You can see super far. When it's clear, you can see the Wrangell Mountains. You can't see them right now because it's not clear. But this place completely changes in the winter. It is like deadly cold out here and everything's just covered in snow. But right now it's a really nice spot. The dogs had dinner and we also grabbed some dinner for us. We made a stir fry back at the house. And I just wanted to say that we come out here in the winter one time usually because it is so spectacular in the winter. It's just picturesque and it looks 
like what I imagine Alaska would look like. It's so deadly cold out here and there's all this hoarfrost on the trees, but we've got to get going because this is not our final destination. Well, we're coming into a beautiful area. We can now see the Wrangell Mountains and it's starting to clear up. We're about 10 miles from a town called Glen Allen. We're going to fill up with gas there and then we're going to take our cutoff down to Chitna and it's, it's at least another hour from when we fill up gas. So we still got a little ways to go, but this has been a great drive so far. Three seventy-two here. It's expensive. <laughs> it's three twenty when we left home. All right, thirty-three miles away. We took another turn off. We're getting close. It's uh, seven fifty-six, so still light out. Uh, both Aaron and I were pretty pumped, so we're definitely gonna try to find a spot, do some fishing tonight. We got our adrenaline rush going. Try to catch us some salmon. Alrighty, it's been exactly one year almost to the day that we've been to the town of Chitna. We've only been here once before, very small town, and we're about to take our turn off. This is where the road turns to dirt. We're getting real close. Well, I guess it doesn't turn right here. <laughs> Well, we made it to where we're parking the truck. A lot of people here, we got the last parking spot. There's a lot of different places you can fish here. There's a place called the Canyon, it's narrower. It's better fishing there. Obviously it's narrower, so it's a better chance of catching the fish. It is 10, 10 at night right now. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish just the little sandbar out here. It's easy access, we can bring the dogs out there. We're gonna try our luck there. We don't have any luck. We're gonna wake up about three or four in the morning. We're sleeping in the front seat of the tundra tonight. And then uh, we'll load up our gear and we'll hike out the canyon. We'll see how that goes, but we're going to get the nets ready and we're just going to hike out there, have a good time, see if we can catch a salmon. All right, so that is the Copper River behind me. She's huge. It's a massive river. It's fast moving. You can see it's cloudy. That's all the silt in it. And it's a very dangerous river, if you couldn't tell just by the video. We heard the fishing was a little bit slow when we got here, but I think it has been good this last week, so I'm hoping it picks up. We allowed a few days for this trip. So just with the fishing, you know, that's naturally happens and we may have to wait a little while for it to pick up. But in the meantime, we have this awesome scenery around us. Change of plans. We're heading up to the canyon. I was down there trying to fish off that bank and the current was so strong that I couldn't uh, go faster than it. It was collapsing my net and I was trying it for a while and it was killing me. So we're gonna hike up. We're gonna hike up the canyon. Last year we brought the six wheeler up here with us. We did not bring it this year because it's extremely sketchy. This is more meant for four wheelers. People do bring side-by-sides up here. I just wasn't comfortable bringing ours back up here again. There's a couple spots where the road washed out and you're like on a 200. That was an exaggeration. 
you're probably on like a 60 or 70 foot cliff down to the river. Anyways, we just didn't want to bring the players this trip, so we're gonna hike up. Uh, there's a spot that we could see from down here that looks like there was no one there. It's a, it's a pretty steep cliff, so we're gonna see if we can get up there and hopefully we can get the net in the water and get some salmon. It is 11.08 p.m. We still got the sun out though, so we're gonna head up the trail and see what happens. Okay, we've hiked a little ways and I've hiked down a few trails to get down to the river, see if it's accessible for us and the dogs. First one wasn't, this one looks absolutely perfect. I think we can get all the way down to the river with the dogs. It's not too steep. And uh, yeah, let's go down there and check it out and see if we can get the net in the water. You go first one. Alrighty, epic spot. Um, it's, I think since it's so late, it's 11.30 now, a lot of people are taking off and they're gonna go camp in their campers for the night. Errol and I, we're gonna burn the midnight oil and we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can catch fish. We've never caught a fish here. We're targeting sockeye salmon. These are called Copper River Reds. They're supposed to be some of the best eating salmon you can get. I'm gonna get my pole together. I've done enough talking, I'm, I'm excited to get this thing in the water. Uh, I'll do it. Just, I just wanna see how deep this is. How deep are you? And when it bumps, are you going to be okay at that level? You want to rope? I'll be good. It's 3.45 and we don't have any fish. <laughs> Eric and I slept for not very long at all on a really cool bed and I think we heard the fishing has slowed down a little bit. It was supposed to be pretty good and we're timing it, trying to time it with a big number of fish that came through at, at the count a few, it's like 60, 70 miles downstream. Um, but it doesn't seem like the fish are here right now. So we're gonna go take a break, eat, feed the dogs, kind of recharge, and I guess maybe do some exploring, sleep, and then maybe, maybe come back out. I think we're getting a little discouraged. We want to see if other people are catching fish too. Or not catching fish. <laughs> okay, I'm pulling her in, baby. This is where we slept. I brought a blanket, but it doesn't really fit two humans and two dogs. So we all had to just sleep on top of each other for about 30 minutes. Dogs aren't having that much fun out here and they're tied up because it's it's pretty dangerous, honestly. The Copper River is not a river you want to mess around with. We're not in the canyon, but we're in a steep enough area. The rock here is like slate and it just breaks and you can just totally go right into the river. So that is why we have some life vests and some ropes and I've got the dogs tied up too. We're both a little hesitant to leave this area because it's such a nice area. There's a bunch of room, even though it's steep, there's a bunch of room. And I'm having a feeling like we're probably not gonna get this little spot again, but we gotta go back. Do you like climbing? Oops. <laughs> we just hit four in the morning. Well, I pretty much feel like I just slept in the front seat of my truck for about an hour, because that's what happened. Everyone is like up super early here. The charters, there's fishing charters you can do here and they'll take you out on boats and drop you off on these cliffs and they'll come pick you up at 24 hours with your fish. All those people came back super early. Uh, Aaron went and got some coffee. There's a little coffee shop here. Expensive coffee, but we needed something. 7.30 right now and the plan is we're gonna let the dogs out. We're gonna feed them, walk them around and they're getting locked in the truck. Uh, we wanna take both of our nets. We wanna walk further and the dogs were holding us back this trip, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go see, see if we can catch some salmon. The chitna lettuce wrap.
okay? Yeah. Well, I think we may have found a spot. It's not horribly steep and it's about half an hour away from the truck. So perfectly reasonable for one of us to walk back. And I think it looks pretty good. This probably goes without saying, but this river is a big river and it's, I mean, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable operating our boat. So that was completely out of the question for us this year. I think we would need several years of much more experience on rivers before we ever attempted this one. But a lot of other boaters out here, it looks like the charter started taking the, the folks out and they go further down the canyon, but we're already in an area where it's restricted. So hopefully that will increase our chances. So we're fishing in a thing called a back eddy and the, what that is is the current, the main current of the river is going down that way and then along some of the edges it'll kind of swirl and kind of kick back up and what that does is it opens our net the way that the fish are swimming and then uh, hopefully they swim into our net and we catch them. But this is nice down here, we got a good spot and we got some blue skies, a lot nicer day today, t-shirt weather, pretty rare up here. Well, unfortunately we are back at the truck for our second nap and we're just not catching anything. Uh, it does not look like many other folks are either. I think it's really slowed down. Last year when we came to, the water was high, the fish count was low, everything was all wrong. So I tried to check the weather this time. The water rose up a little bit and that makes it a little bit more challenging here. It's definitely a really intimidating river to fish. Uh, we're, we're doing it all just based upon our research and like observing, you know, we don't have anyone showing us how to do it. But there are people out there still trying, really putting in a good effort. We have fished for hours and we haven't quite been here for 24 hours yet, but we're feeling like it's slow enough that we want to come up with a different plan because it's just not panning out right now. We can spend like four days, five days out here, so we may end up coming back to this location, but we're gonna go head up the road and check out the bridge, really cool area, show you some fish wheels, if we can see some fish wheels, and see if there's anybody catching any fish up there. Well, we're at another spot. Um, I got my binoculars. I'm gonna see if people are catching fish over here. Well, last time we came here, or last year, this place, this area in particular, was like slammed and there's there's nobody, at least here, so I don't know if they're catching fish down here. It's a good 30 feet long. Oh, at least, yeah.
I saw that thing, huh? Yep. Windy here on the north side of the bridge. This is where the boat launches and the fish wheels. The fish wheels are really fun to see. Lots of eagles, of course, too. The bridge is important because that is the section where the permits change. So down south of the bridge, the permit that Eric and I have is called a personal use permit. And so we are allowed for our household 25 salmon, sockeye salmon, and 10 for each additional house member. So we're allowed 35 total. Above the bridge, it's subsistence fishing, so it's a little bit different. You can have fish wheels. They're allowed a higher limit. Basically, we can't fish this side. We are restricted to down there. <laughs> it's turning out to be a nice day, but it can get cold. It could be windy, and it may even get rainy. Well, it's four now in the afternoon. We got to feed the dogs their dinner. They're on a schedule. They get upset if they don't get fed. Uh, we were just on the other side of the bridge and those guys were catching a f some fish. I think we saw f three fish caught and I think that was the most we've seen caught so far. Their poles are set up a lot different than ours. They have floats on the nets because they're fishing in a really deep channel and their poles are also like three times as long as ours. Ours are about maybe 12, 13, 15 feet long and theirs are like 35 feet long. So we couldn't do that fishing, but it was cool to watch them. And it was really cool to see them actually catching some fish. Like Errol said, just not a lot of people are catching fish. I was watching the fish wheels. I didn't see any fish get caught in those. Uh, there's a few guides out here with uh, clients on their boats and they're going up and down river. I watched them for about 20 minutes. They're not catching any fish. And we're pretty much at a dilemma on what we want to do. We did bring fishing poles because there's other places pretty close to here that you can also fish for salmon. Uh, you can do flossing for those. But we really like this place and we really want to come home with a lot of salmon and we're just kind of deciding what we want to do and we're hoping that the fishing will kind of just pick up here and we can we can catch our fish. Oh heck no. There. Sorry dude, it's gotta sit for three minutes. Better. It's been about 24 hours since we got to Chitna and started fishing. And we have fished many hours, but we have not landed one fish. So it's a little bit saddening to say, I, I really thought I timed this right, but I guess I didn't. This kind of happened to us last year too. And we're kind of throwing in the towel. We're gonna go to plan B, which is to go a little further north. The sockeyes have already been running for a little while and they have already traveled up north. We're going to try to intercept them on a river called Plutina River. There's a campground there and you're allowed three a day. So that sounds much better than zero to me right now. I think we're both a little exhausted from hiking in and out so many miles and going in and out of the, down of these hills. And these, these uh, hills actually get much steeper if you go further into the canyon. And I think that's where the fishing's a lot better, but we can't really go that far, not only because it's so far away from the truck, but mainly because we don't feel comfortable scaling cliffs and tying off. Usually you have to, you have to tie off um, because it's so steep while you're fishing. You know, this is actually pretty easy stuff, believe it or not. So we're gonna head out and pack the truck and head down the road. That's skunk. Stop. <laughs> You're like vertical. All right, that was the hard part. It's all downhill from here. What time is it? 
9 o'clock. It's been a long day. Did it make it? Yeah. It did? Yeah. Watch. Yeah. It's pretty far. Okay, we are headed out. We're going up the hill. Just another beautiful day, summer day in Alaska. Let's go for it. Take her easy on the old girl. This is so phenomenal. We had to stop. I don't even know what to say. It looks like like a whole nother world out there. The sun is blinding me. And we stopped at Liberty Falls too. That's a waterfall that we have not seen and I wanted to stop at. But this is so beautiful. That's the Copper River, I'm assuming. <laughs> Down, honey, and I'll help you with the next ones. Well, it's been a while since we've seen you guys, but we have fish. We have 24 beautiful salmon. We got the backpacks loaded down. We just hiked up the cliff from where we were fishing. We're done, and we hiked out really far today, like three miles. So now we have like almost 200 pounds of salmon that we're walking out of here. So let the fun begin.
That's heavy. I'm on the second backpack. Errol's gonna carry the other one, and I may, maybe have hitched us a ride back to our camp. We'll see. Hopefully, it's gonna be a long walk. Oh gosh, are you okay? <laughs> I cannot believe we made it back on account of a very lovely family and gentleman that rode us out on his ATV and trailer. That was a four mile walk in. So Eric and I were thinking, yeah, it'll probably take us two hours. But those salmon, we either got 24, 25 or 26, I don't know, and which is not our limit. But honestly, it doesn't even matter. It's so unreal, the fact that we got them. This is our third day here. To bring you up to speed real quick, we left yesterday. We had pretty much given up and we spent the night somewhere. We pitched a tent and we had a discussion when we said we're gonna head back to Chitna. We weren't that far away. We came back today and decided that we wanted to hike way out to the canyon and just get it done and we did. And thank goodness for that very kind person. Very thankful for that. Those are my hands. We haven't showered for three days and that person didn't even complain. That was heavy. Oh, this one played lighter. Do they all fit in that ice chest? Uh, yeah. <sighs> Good thing we didn't catch any more, because that's, that's it. Oh, no, it doesn't even fit. They filled it up? They filled it up. They're bigger. Okay, 10 o'clock exactly. This trip so far, we've driven 370 miles. So now we gotta drive back. And we're gonna try to drive through the night. I don't know, I can drive without getting tired for some reason. But we're gonna go, if we have to take a nap, we'll take a nap. But here we go. I'm here to say we made it all the way home with our salmon. We are so excited. Both of us had to take a shower, had to take a little nap before we get to start processing them. We ended up with 27 Copper River Red Salmon. So thrilled. Cannot wait to try them. We haven't tried them before. These fish swim hundreds of miles upriver and they have to have a lot of fat and energy stored up to do that. That river is wild and it's turbulent. They're supposed to be incredible fish, have a great flavor. We cannot wait to try them. And Eric's got a lot of work to do as far as processing them. They're big fish, much bigger than we were expecting. I think we estimated it's probably like 200 pounds. So it would have been a lot to backpack out. And I'm, I'm thankful for that ride. Really grateful for the fish. We would have been so exhausted if we had to walk the four miles out with these fish. I can tell you that. And I definitely am surprised that we're even here. It feels surreal because I think we thought we were coming home with no fish again. Every year we go out there, it's an experience. So you always get to come back with that. It's a beautiful drive. And even if we don't get fish, I feel like we learned a lot of valuable things. So I definitely couldn't be upset. But this year it did pay off and I just feel like we're both just can't even believe it. So thankful for it. And really Eric was the one who dip netted all of these fish by himself. So he's probably feeling it a lot more than I am right now. I'm gonna go grab them and we are going to start processing them.
Well, it is just after 5.30 a.m. and I'm not gonna lie, I am beat. I'm pretty much taking all I can take, but we still have a lot more work to do. We have 27 beautiful fish that we're gonna flay. We're gonna flay all these, we're gonna get them on the smoker, we're gonna can them. These fish are also known as the Copper River Reds and this is supposed to be one of the best eating salmon in Alaska, this specific run. So we will find that out. You might notice that the tail looks a little funny and that's because we clip off the corners. Uh, that's just what you have to do when you catch these fish in that area. We're gonna get going, got a lot of work to do. Alrighty, that is it. Gorgeous sockeye salmon, beautiful. And the cool thing about canning meat, in my opinion, is you don't have to be that careful with the fillets. It's not gonna matter what they look like. They're going in a jar. You can leave the bones in there. You can them with the bones. They just kind of turn to nothing. So this shouldn't be too bad. Again, Errol is gonna go and she's gonna scrape our salmon with her little spoon and she's gonna get a bunch more of our salmon burger meat. Boom, one down. Beautiful fillets. This, I'm pretty sure, was the first one that I caught in my net. I remember that because it was really small and I was like, oh man, that's a pretty small one. But the king season actually closed. King salmon season closed one day before we got there. And we didn't do a lot of filming once we started catching fish because we were on a cliff. We were tied on with rope, we had our life vests on. It was extremely slippery once you started catching fish because all the water would hit these rocks. But I actually caught three king salmon. You know, we had to put them back, which is no big deal. It was just awesome to catch them. And two of them, I actually caught a king salmon and a sockeye in the same net at the same time. And the biggest king salmon that I caught in that net, no joke, was like three and a half feet long. And this thing was just freaking heavy, but it was an awesome experience. I'm never gonna forget that place. It was a really great time. So a lot of people like to uh, clean their fish out there. They like to fillet them and you know, they can leave the carcasses out there. They don't have to bring that mess home with them. We prefer to bring our fish home whole because we like to make other things out of them. I think we're gonna make some, some dog food out of the carcasses. We'll feed the chickens. We'll, we'll probably do something with the roe. So lots of different ways you can get these fish home. I'm pretty sure by the time that we made it back to the truck with these fish, I don't think I physically could have processed 27 salmon, so I was already a little too tired. So another one down. This is a female right here. So we mentioned this was our second time going out there. First time we got skunked. We learned a lot. Yeah. We didn't get any fish. That's okay. Like Arrow said, it's a beautiful place to just go. Second trip, we caught fish. We learned an a extreme lot. amount more. What? Um, we. It turns out that the the landslide that we were worried about, that we didn't want to bring our side by side through because it was so narrow and you were on a cliff. They actually brought equipment in there and they fixed it. So the trail is like super wide and nice and we could have brought our side by side. Next year that may work out a lot better if we would decide we want to do that. Yes, like I said, we've learned so much. Next year we're going to we're going to bring the 6-wheeler. We're going to bring better equipment for tying off. We're going to bring better equipment for stringing the fish off. Uh, we have a we have a ton of different things that we're going to do. Yeah, we needed more rope because you you tying yourself off and the river actually dropped like 2 feet when we were there. It was pretty crazy. Yep. And we need you need more stringers for your fish if you're taking that many. You can't have that many on each one. You need a, a way to hike them up the hill because we were about 200 to 300 feet from the trail down, down a cliff um, on the riverbank, and I think I hiked up the fish in my backpack. About I did uh, two loads of ten, and I did the rest um, just by hand. But a lot of hard work, and it requires a lot of gear, and I think crazy people to do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure it does. This time around, we really learned like so much when we did we covered so i'm not sure how much we hiked because we hiked those first two days a lot Gosh, we had yeah. to come back a lot with the dogs the first outing we took the dogs 
And I had thought that would work out well to like sleep with them on rocks and stuff, but it just didn't work out that well. They didn't like it, we didn't like it. Um, so we, we left them more in our shell and that worked out really good. I'm not sure next year if we would plan that to do that again, sleep out there, or if we'd maybe come back to our maybe camp or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it'd be a little different next year. And it all depends, you know, if the okay. fishing's good and, and how the water is. That's what we've learned both times. The water was not really ideal, even though the fish were great this year. And that really can influence what's happening. That's why we weren't able to, to intercept them the first few days. Oh, let's look at the fat. I know. And that fish. It's, it's crazy. It's interesting. Very beautiful it's fish. It's a thicker rit, like line of... So as soon as we started catching fish out there, the system that we had, Errol and I working together, it, it, it worked out pretty good. Basically what would happen was I'd try to catch the fish in my net, I'd flip them up to Ariel, she'd dispatch it, she'd knock it on the head, she'd bleed them out, she'd cut the tail, and then she'd put them on the stringer down in the water. And I feel like it would have been extremely hard with just one person. Yeah, we saw people doing it, but that, that takes skill and <laughs> on the hills. Yeah. It worked really well. I don't think we'd ever have two dip nets in the water. And for Eric, he did all that, that muscle work. Just to get your, fit, your net back in the water really was helpful. Yeah, the fish kind of came in schools and it was something called a back eddy, which I talked about earlier. So the current's going down and then it kind of swirls around and it pushes the fish up. So as soon as you start catching one, you want to get that fish out of the water and you, you want to get your net back in there because the chances are you're going to catch another one. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it right there. Okay, we're going to do a weight and measurement on these fish. I think these two are the bigger ones. These are about average. The biggest one, the ones are... 24? 25 inches. The smaller ones, about 22, 22, about 25 with the tail. Pretty good size. Let's see how much these things weigh. We usually do not weigh them or measure them at all, but I've, I've, I want to know. I want to know how much these are for us for when we They seem so much, they seem bigger. They just seem bigger than the sockeyes we're used to catching. Well, it's looking like they're about a six pound fish, which is a little surprising because I thought the last ones we processed were... Six to seven pounds. Which were, they were, they were fat. These ones are longer. Longer. But they're big. So they're about the, they're about the same size. They just seem bigger. I don't know if they, I don't know. They fought harder maybe. They just, they just seem bigger. Anyways. You know I will say though, the flays on the other one, you notice how chunky they were like long and wide. On the other ones? They were big. Their bellies were big. So maybe yeah. that gives them more girth. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. That fat. Look at that fat. It's crazy. I'm I'm seriously like about to cook some of this up. I so know. Like, mid, we made to do that. a mid, a mid break snack. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, you got a girl again. Okay. We're headed over to the chicken coop. I'm going to give them a carcass now and some eggs. They love the eggs. And all that salmon we fed them last time, their eggs turned the most vibrant orange I have ever seen. There you go. Yeah, really, really, really pretty. All right. Nine. Nine left. Woo! What are you doing, Bo? Alrighty, last one. Ariel's got some scraping to do. Um, she's gonna start filling her bucket for our dog food chum. But I'm gonna get this one done and then we're gonna head inside because we haven't eaten breakfast yet and I need, I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I need. No questions asked. There's, I'll tell you. Oh, they're biting me so bad. I had like welts on my neck when Gosh, I- Gosh, they're getting me good. They're trying to bite you through your shirt. I know they can't, but. 
Oh, they're biting. They're biting. All yeah, over. They're biting. They're biting. Jeez. They're biting me too. I thought they're biting you me on the scalp. Smoker though. fired up and get some smoke going, huh? Yeah. Yeah. A little soft. Oh, that's Well, we ended up with almost two five gallon buckets full. So that means it's gonna be at least two batches. And today we're gonna to be doing the birch again. And I think each batch we'll probably do for about three hours. So I'm gonna get it laid on there and then we're gonna start the fire. It was really smoky last time. Good thing is we don't have to base this throughout. I'm just gonna do a little salt and pepper at the beginning, add a little more flavor to it. We'll start the smoker and uh, we'll just keep throwing logs on there. Let her smoke. Oh, did you want to oil it? No, it's already got oil on there. I think it'll do good for next. Oh my gosh, it's a slippery, slippery one. You ever heard that saying? Do you want to play leapfrog? Slippery as a copper over red. What's that game? Is that what we do? Wait, frog? Yeah. Let the smoke and begin. No, I'm fine with the smoke. I just, uh. How many more did you end up getting on there? Three. Oh, nice. Can I get a high five? I got a double high five. Oh, okay. I don't know what a double high two, five is. I think it's two hands. Well, the salmon smoky, we're gonna get started on some dog food for the boys. We have a bunch of carcasses in here. How many you got in here? Maybe 10 or so, and we fill it up with water. We're gonna put it on the camp chest stove on low, and it's just gonna cook and cook and cook with the lid on. It'll probably take about five or six hours. It's gonna completely break down. It's gonna turn into what we call chum. It's basically just like a soupy looking mush and all the bones are going to break down and everything and then we put it in mason jars and we freeze it and we feed it to the dogs but I can already tell it doesn't look like stuck to it. It looks extremely looks, good, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, it looks gorgeous. Okay. Oil check was like yeah. key. It needs to be picking these off in the past. I know. Do you have a rag out here, I have a uh, shop towel. Do you want one? Well, these look amazing. About three hours and 15 minutes these went on the birch. These look really good. I love the pepper on there. I can't wait to try these out. We've already got our stuff ready to pressure can these. We've got it over on the counter. We're gonna fill up this bucket with these, bring it over there. We're gonna take care of that. And then I'm also gonna throw on the second batch on here and get that smoking. Gorgeous. Look at that meat. Look at that cross section.
Well, one thing I've noticed about this dog chum, we've never made the chum out of the uh, Copper River salmon. There's a layer of like oily fat on top of this. And I believe that's what these fish are known for. They're supposed to be really fatty and tasty and, and oily. So I'm really looking forward to it. And the dogs get to enjoy the nice fatty oil too. This is breaking down. Uh, there's, there's still a lot of bones in here like, like these. So you can tell this is not ready. Nope, it's getting pretty close. They're falling apart. So probably another hour on this. Some nice dog food for them. Let's get started on uh, putting our, our salmon in some jars. We're gonna end up with a lot of canned salmon. This is gonna be awesome. One of these fillets, like a, not even that big of one, is doing is doing over a jar. So this is gonna work out good. And we're gonna do multiple batches. So this first batch, we're gonna do all dill. We picked a bunch of dill, and then probably do parsley in the next one. Maybe sage. Maybe cilantro. Maybe cilantro. Whatever we feel like doing. We don't have any garlic right now or peppers. Yeah. That would have been nice. good. But this is this is gonna turn out awesome. It's always kind of interesting to figure out how many jars it's gonna make because sometimes different fillets don't make as much, and they make more than you think. Yeah. And these are big fish. This is, we have like, what did I say? A little under 30 salmon jars, so not that many. Left. Yeah, from left last from year. last year. And we're eating them, so this is awesome to replenish. And then we already froze a bunch from when we went down and harvested the sockeyes in Seward. So we have a bunch of frozen salmon, yep. and it's time, it's time to can them. That's what we're going to do with all this whole batch. And we saved one big filet, and we're going to cook that up. I am starving. <laughs> I'm really hungry. I'm glad you're going to cook the whole filet? Uh, I don't know. Maybe half. Okay. The juice, the oils on this are just like, I wanted to see about how much you're shoving yours in. These look awesome. We pressure can our fish for about 100 minutes and we actually invested in a second pressure canner. We have yeah. the Presto kind. Well, it's been so good to us for years so we just decided we get another one yep. and we're always running double batches, double stacks. So this yep. is going to make it really quick today. Yeah, each pressure canner we can fit 16. 16. So we can do 32 at a time with our second pressure canner. And we're doing like, oh. 50 jars. We're going to do a lot. And another question we get a lot is if, is what liquid we add to here. Yes. You do not want to add any liquid to these. No. You'll end up with a ton of liquid when the canning process is done. It just pulls all the moisture out of the fish. So don't add any liquid to it. Yeah, we don't add liquid. Bo, what are you doing over here? He's extremely desperate for salmon. Look at that. Imagine all the stuff people have lost out of their boats. I'm thinking that we need to have, I liked some people's systems out there. And I know we're ready to improve. And I know not everyone did it, but I like the guys. There was like the guys that were like, they were tying up up at the top. So there was never even a chance. And I feel like that's probably really, that's probably the technique I'm gonna go. Yeah. Cause I just want to be on a rope the entire time. Should be good. Mm. Damn. Yes. Whoa, you picking up mister? <sighs> I like nice big chunks. Are they growing pretty well? Oh yeah. You need more jars already, or how you looking? You still got room? Still got room for now, yeah. That's probably still hot, huh? Yeah, they just need to warm up. That chum looks really good already. The fish stuff. That's almost there, huh? Yeah, looks really good. They're hard when they get stuck together, huh? To get them out. Yeah. We got both of our canners ready. We're gonna be doing these inside on the indoor stove. This camp chef, it kind of burns a little too hot for us. So we're gonna bring them inside. All right, pretty sure that is the most beautiful thing besides Ariel that I've ever seen. This nice salmon filet. We're gonna cook up about half of this. Let me see if we got any bones in it. I know I got bones over here. Yeah, we're gonna cook up half of this. We're doing it simple. We're gonna do some coconut oil in the pan. That's like our favorite way to eat it. I don't know, it just gives it a really good flavor. And then we're gonna do some of the spruce tip salt and a little pepper and that's it. We're gonna see how this stuff tastes. You know what I think I'm gonna do? We like to fry the skin too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fillet this off the skin and we're gonna have some fried skin. It's my absolute favorite. I know. Boom. Look at that beauty. Oh my gosh. Oh. 
So that salmon fillet is done. Uh, it looks really good. I can't wait to try it. I have noticed that I did put some oil in this pan, but a lot of oil is coming out of that fish. So it's, it's oily and fatty, which I'm really looking forward to. Give the skin a couple more seconds, really fry it up, and we'll be ready to try this stuff. First bite. Copper River Red Salmon. Wow. For sure <laughs> more fat because it's crispity. That's so good. And we've never eaten crispy salmon that you didn't put. Like we don't bread them or fry, you know, we don't usually put breading or anything. That's a, uh... wow, that is the best, one of the, that's the best time I've ever had in my life. I feel like it's, it's really obvious there's more fat and oil. That's how you taste, yeah. Richness is what I taste in it. Rich. Like really rich yeah. meat. The, usually when we get the sockeyes, like the ones we just got from Seward, it's just a real fresh, yeah, clean. just clean meat. This is like a real fresh meat, but it's got like a rich flavor, like a oily. This and the other salmon have been so oh my moist. Gosh. They've been really moist. Mm -hmm. Like almost like they're just, they're moist. They're super moist. Can I eat the skin? Yeah, let's eat it. Oh, it's good. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Your pig skin. Mm. It's more crispy. They're always crispy, but this one's extra crispy. It like puffed up like a pork rind. Yeah, it's extra crispy. That's the oil in that fish. Wow. Okay. I mean, right up my alley. Does that not taste like a pork rind? Yeah, that I, could crazy. Eat, I could eat those all day. Phenomenal. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what to say. The best thing ever. We've heard the hype about this fish saying that Copper River Reds, Copper River Reds are the best ones you can get. And it's, this is the best salmon I've ever had in my life. Good. Very, very happy with that. Smoker's still going. I just put a bunch more wood on there. That's got at least maybe an hour and a half left, two hours. Chum's still going. It's got another hour. The pressure canners are venting. We got to get back in there and monitor the, the pressure in them. This is delicious salmon. I'm extremely happy with this stuff. You know what I really like is the, uh... oh yeah, this is a little burnt. I really like the pepper. Yeah. Okay, round two is done. It's 6.30 in the evening. We're gonna get these put in jars, the pressure canners inside, they're done, they're just kind of cooling off. We're gonna take those out and we're gonna keep on rolling. I smell it from here. They stuck together, huh? The only thing they're stuck to is together. <laughs> Pressure can fry then? Yeah, when we do the swap. Yeah, might as well. All right. That's good. Yep. Of course, I do heavyweight all the time. Heavyweight lifting. <laughs> does it taste the same? No, it doesn't taste the same. Okay. <laughs> I'll get a okay, I guess I should have said watch out. <laughs> Some good looking stuff right there, bro. darken so much it's crazy to me i mean they go back to being red it smells good yeah it does smell good well it was another long night of canning for us we ended up finishing it about 11 30 p.m last night and that's it that's our finished product We've got 54 of these beautiful jars of salmon, and we ended up with 19 of the dog food. Yep, and these have 
nothing like the salmon we've canned. They've had this really cool layer of fatty oil in there. So really good product we ended up with. Seeing all of this fish laid out on our counter just reminds me of how awesome it is that the state allows you to go out and harvest this amount of fish. This isn't like sport fishing or even hunting like a trophy animal. This is strictly families and people going out and just getting food, food from the land. We're both thrilled to take part in this. I know people have been doing this for a long time. This is going to be a lot of canned food for us for the winter and for summer as well. Yeah, there's tons of ways you can eat this. Honestly, I think the way we eat it the most is just straight out of the can or we throw like a little salad dressing in there and make a, a salmon salad. We do soups with it. I mean, we make salmon patties. The sky's the limit. You can do a ton of stuff with this fish. And canning the salmon has been for us probably the most realistic thing to do because storage, it just works that way. And we don't really have that much freezer space, especially if we were to harvest another animal and produce. We also freeze some produce. So I'm really limited in the amount of food we can put in our freezer. All in all, grateful for this trip, really thankful for the fish. And I'm super thankful that Eric puts all the effort and time into packing and going on this journey with me. I wanted to go to Chitna last year and we did, and it didn't pay off. But this year, you know, things worked. In our favor yep and we've been on plenty of fishing trips where we put in just as much effort we fish just as hard and we walk away with absolutely no fish so we both know how extremely lucky we are to have all this food to last us through the rest of the summer and all winter we hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one yep let's put this fish away <laughs> oh it's so heavy i can't even move it where are you going with that one